In uh, the last issue, the Earl of Greed got his butt handed to him by Wonder Woman, literally blown out of the sky by the army. But now the tables have turned, uh, because this time around she faces the dastardly Duke of Deception. Deception uh, is much like Greed in that he is a henchman of Mars, and uh, he has many of the same abilities. He is a cunning foe, uh, and Wonder Woman is going to have to outwit him if she wants to survive. Uh, not much is known about Deception because the character uh, existed mostly in the Golden Age and he didn't survive much beyond that. We know for sure that he has a high ranking position in the Army of Mars. He commands a legion of soldiers and has been granted many devious abilities from Mars himself. As we can see here, the Duke of Deception appears to be uh, like an old frail man, but in reality he could potentially be one of the most powerful beings on Mars. The Duke has abilities similar to the Earl of Greed. He has Astral Projection, which he can use to appear like a ghost uh, and manipulates the minds of men. Uh, except unlike Greed, he doesn't make people lust for money. Instead, he deceives them by telling them brilliantly crafted lies, uh, which often result in disastrous consequences. Deception is also a master of illusions. Uh, he is a very skilled liar capable of fooling even the smartest and wisest men. Uh, he is also a master of disguise and can take the form of anyone, uh, including their voice and mannerisms. So now that we understand who Deception is, we can get into his story. First thing we notice here is the Earl of Greed. He has made his return to Mars and he is terrified to expose his failure uh, to capture Wonder Woman. He tries to run away, but is confronted by Mars and he confesses. Mars is so angry at his failure that he sends Greed to prison. It looks like uh, next on the list will be the Duke of Deception, and that is his chance to capture Wonder Woman. There's nothing I would love to tell you more uh, than Deception has an excellent plan to defeat Wonder Woman, but unfortunately uh, he's just going to disguise himself. It's a classic switch, uh, which doesn't seem very promising, but uh, I don't know, I guess we'll just have to see if it works out or not. Actually, to be quite honest, the Wonder Woman disguise doesn't even really come into play here. In fact, I'll just admit right now that Deception doesn't really use it against Wonder Woman. Uh, he's not really even in this story. Instead, he opts to send one of his henchmen to capture Wonder Woman, and he only really appears at like the very end. And I'm sorry, but that's true. <laughs> the first appearance of Deception is a bit of a letdown. So now the scene shifts back to America where Wonder Woman is doing her part for the war effort by selling bonds. People are lined up to buy from her and she's making a mint for the army. However, in the middle of all this, a Hawaiian woman named Naha interrupts her. It looks like this woman has been stabbed. The police arrive and decide that they have to take Wonder Woman down to the precinct for questioning. Wonder Woman is innocent, but she agrees to cooperate in the name of justice. They put her in a cell and take her golden lasso away from her. Eventually, she awaits for her lawyer to arrive. At her lawyer's estate, uh, she attempts to use her lasso on the lawyer so she can learn the truth about the murder. But it turns out her lasso is fake, and the real golden lasso is in the hands of Naha, who is not only alive, but is also able to capture Wonder Woman with her cunning deception. So now Wonder Woman is a slave to Naha and must do everything she can. So they go on a boat together to travel to some faraway land. So Naha takes Wonder Woman into the sleeping quarters and binds her completely, including her eyes and mouth. However, Wonder Woman is not such easy prey. She uses her mental telepathy to contact Etta Candy. Then she uses her mouth to open a hatch and squirm her way out of the boat. Etta is outside to pick her up, but not before Naha is captured and spanked for her sins. It's so weird to me, like why is Wonder Woman such a creep? Why does it always have to come down to a spanking? Yeah, I mean, so that was weird. But now the tables have turned. Keep in mind, we're already on page 10 of this 13 page story and Deception still hasn't shown up. Naha is kind of the primary villain here, and she's a weak villain in my opinion. She has no charisma, but at least the Wonder Woman disguise is about to make a comeback, 
Check this out. So now Naha is working for Wonder Woman, and it turns out she has the duplicate Wonder Woman in her basement. Now Wonder Woman has her own disguise, and she's inspired to capture Deception herself. Meanwhile, Deception is actually across the world trying to convince Emperor Hirohito to invade Hawaii based on false information. So Wonder Woman and her group travel to Hawaii, Etta Candy goes into a catatonic state and uses her astral form to possess the duplicate Wonder Woman. Now there are two Wonder Women and the trap is set. They decide to go enjoy the Hawaiian festivities knowing that eventually the Japanese will attack. Then suddenly Japanese soldiers appear and capture Wonder Woman, binding her and dragging her away. Meanwhile, the Japanese army shows up in Hawaii, and they have a brilliant battle where Wonder Woman and Steve Trevor join forces to repel the invasion. After that, Wonder Woman tracks down the Japanese spies who are going to serve her up to the Duke of Deception without knowing that this is actually Etta Candy. Finally, the Duke shows up to collect his prize. Just then, the real Wonder Woman reveals herself and pounds the Duke into dust. He tries to make his escape on a Martian ship, uh, but not before Wonder Woman smashes it to pieces uh, with a giant rock. So that's it. That's it for Deception. He's going back to Mars with a broken back. And I must admit, I am a bit disappointed by his performance, much like I'm sure Mars is going to be disappointed when he hears about the failed capture. <laughs> I expected more from the Duke. I figured with his power set, he could be a good match for Wonder Woman, you know, intellectually versus her physical, but instead he just decides to charge his responsibilities to one of his underlings, and the story suffers for it. Anyway, there will be uh, some more stories featuring the Duke coming later. Expect him to make some more appearances before we're done with the Golden Age Wonder Woman. Uh, but for now, that's all for this episode. Stay tuned for the next one, where Wonder Woman goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Count of Conquest. As always, if you liked reading this comic with me and you want to read more, uh, then why not like this video and subscribe to my channel. And if you really want to help me out, uh, why not check out my Patreon. Until next time, nerds, stay heroic.